Congress may be on recess, but there is a long list of priorities on the agenda when they return to Washington. As Lisa Desjardins reports, there's something else making a comeback to the earmark, an object both relished and reviled that benefits constituents back home. We start here, Ansonia, Connecticut. Mayor David Cassetti needs a new bridge. This outdated one is a literal roadblock to perhaps Ansonia's greatest asset, an abandoned copper and brass factory. 66 acres of rusting but prime real estate near major highways and waterways, a piece of history from a century ago where now Ansonia sees its future. We want to build it back up to an economic engine where we could have jobs for, for our community as well as the surrounding communities. I mean, be thousands of jobs. A no-nonsense character, Cassetti helped muscle Ansonia's Main Street back to life after years as a near ghost town. But unemployment is still above the national average. Restaurants are hungry for more customers during the day, hoping for a new large employer. Maybe Google or or Amazon or some, you know, one of the big internet uh, companies. But first, to get anyone to this potential business site, the city needs a stronger bridge and millions of dollars to build it. Enter the congressional earmark. By definition, an earmark is congressional funding for a specific local project. As old as the nation itself, they've often been pet projects of powerful lawmakers, and at times, scandalous. An Ohio congressman agreed to plead guilty today to conspiracy and making false statements. 2006, Bob Ney pleaded to corruption, taking money from lobbyist Jack Abramoff in exchange for earmarks for his clients. One year before, earmarks for defense contractors brought down Congressman Duke Cunningham, who pleaded guilty to bribery. Some proposed earmarks, like Alaska's so-called bridge to nowhere, added to the fury. The House uh, has made clear in our rules uh, that there will be no earmarks. In 2011, Republicans running the House decided simply to stop using them. President Obama pushed Senate Democrats to do the same. Earmarks went on pause until this year, when Congress decided to bring them back. I call this meeting of the Committee on Appropriations to order. Two House Democrats, Appropriations Chairwoman Rosa DeLauro and Transportation Chairman Peter DeFazio, are leading the effort to put them in the spending bills before Congress now. Tell me. Why bring back earmarks now? You know, because I, I think uh, what we're about here is uh, the, the spending of federal dollars. And I don't believe that uh, uh, anyone knows better about what the, uh, the issues are in, in, in a community uh, than the, the member who represents that community. It's about who decides which parks, which roads, and which local projects get federal funds. Right now, that's government agencies. Earmarks would give individual lawmakers some of that power. Now, earmarks amount to just a fraction of the federal budget, but even so, billions of dollars are on the line. To shake earmarks past, the Appropriations Committee has given them a new brand name, Community Project Funding, and new rules. Each earmark request must be public. They are posted online, a sea change from years where this was all in secret. Each must show community support, and they cannot directly benefit for-profit companies. Well, we're all playing by the same rules. It's got to meet the guidelines. So for me, I will follow the same guidelines as, uh, as everyone else. Transparency is better, but not bringing them back at all would have been the best decision. Tom Schatz is president of Citizens Against Government Waste. He sees earmarks as a blight, feeding corruption and runaway spending. There is nothing good about earmarks. It doesn't matter what the project is. The merits are not the issue. Which is why 105 House members, mostly Republicans, are not requesting any, boycotting the idea. Among them, freshman Byron Donalds. We don't have any money. Like, we are deficit spending in Washington, D.C. Donald has stood his ground as more senior Republicans have told him that earmarks have a long history and can do good. With all due respect to my colleagues that have been up there uh, longer, I'm here now. And so my job isn't to look at what has always happened. In truth, most controversial earmarks die on the vine. The bridge to nowhere was withdrawn. A proposed rainforest in Iowa never happened. Lawrence Welk Museum, no earmark. 
One of the few to make headlines and keep its funding was for this bearded iron statue in Birmingham, Alabama, Vulcan. The century-old symbol of the city's strength and skill was crumbling in 2001 and got a notorious $3.5 million earmark. Happy birthday. But one person's boondoggle Happy is another's joy. Birthday. The statue, which turned 117 in May, and the park that blossomed around it are significant draws in Birmingham. A thousand miles away, that's the dream in Ansonia, Connecticut. I want to bring it back to the heyday that it once was with a twist of the 21st century. Yes. Mayor Cassetti has a vision and luck. I stood with Mayor Cassetti in Ansonia at the Ansonia Copper and Brass. His Congress member is Rosa DeLauro, the appropriations chair restarting earmarks, and Ansonia's new bridge is on her list. The Republican mayor defends this cross-party alliance. She knows that it's, it's in need. I mean, we can't just let them sit idle like they have been for the last 20 years. Something needs to happen. Multiply Ansonia's story by 5,000. That's how many projects have been requested as earmarks so far. While critics grit their teeth, lawmakers are now deciding not if, but which projects like this make it into spending bills. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins.